Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan once said, We don't know who discovered water, but it wasn't the fish. What if I told you that we are quite similar to fish when it comes to being indulged in our own realities with little regard for the things going on around us? Arthur Stephen Letter interprets this quote perfectly. He writes, We are so close to our own minds, so immersed into our own reality, that we have the least perspective on it. Only when his hook, thrashing in a net, gills gasping and flooding for breath, only then a fish discovers water. So, too with us, when pain suddenly jerks us out of our otherwise ordinary life, we discover something powerful and true about ourselves, end quote. At age 13, this rang true for me. My community was impacted by something incredibly traumatic. And I remember my initial response was, I just want to hide away. But instead, I did the opposite. To myself, I said these simple words. I had a lot to say. I want my voice to be heard. And in the midst of the chaos and in the pain and in the uncertainties about what was to come, something wonderful happened. It was the first step of discovering my place in the world and finding my voice. And through this journey, discovering my voice led me to another huge realization, the concept of leading while healing. While we hear a lot of motivating stories of how people have overcome all of the hardships in their life, there is no statement more powerful than telling a story Steal while on the journey and sharing it in real tongue. People not only become inspired by what we have to say, but they find the courage within themselves to let go of any expectations of having to have it all together to be seen as whole. As a mental health advocate and activist, I am seen as a leader by many. And I was once that fish oblivious to the world around me and his impact. At the core, the basis of this discovery is really about bringing oneself to leadership and recognizing that all leaders are people and everything is not always okay. Relatability connects us to people. And not just the same old line of, oh, I'm no longer at X, today I'm at Y, but rather, today I'm still at X too. We find a different connection when we connect with people on these levels. And we see that through vulnerability, strength can be found. Stories of recovery and overcoming are inspiring, and that is absolutely something to be acknowledged. But very little do I hear talks by someone who is walking the same walk as their audience at the time their talk is given. I've truly realized that it is just as important to embrace and allow the present journey to be a memorable lesson and humbling experience rather than looking to find that in our recovery story alone. I challenge you, moving forward, to think as think of leaders as whole humans. See others regardless of their title 
as whole humans first. Today, I am more motivated than ever to continue the path that I'm on. Because looking back in retrospect, 13-year-old me can now truly understand the extent of the power each of us holds when it comes to discovering something much deeper within us, something beyond us, though, I mean, more than we could have imagined. And our ability to bring forth lasting change in the world around us. And while I can't change the world alone, I can change how I see my world. And I can do that through constant awareness, as well as joining hand in hand or deal and deal with fellow self-discoverers and change makers. At the beginning of this activism journey, it hasn't always been easy. In fact, it was quite difficult for me because I was really struggling with who I was as an individual and who I was as this sudden leader. And then I realized both are human. Both are still me. Both resonate with others. And I express my vulnerabilities with both me alone as an individual and as a leader. And I can wholeheartedly say that I, Kenidra, alone am enough. I can truly say that with my whole heart. And make no mistake, my activism has helped me to find my purpose. And not only that, but it has amplified its vitality and sharing with others. While it feels good to connect with people, it feels nice, it feels warm, it feels comforting. I also understand that it may be uncomfortable for other people when it comes to self-discovery and being presented with another person's story of hardships and vulnerabilities. Therefore, not everyone is open to receiving what you have to say and doing no work on themselves for that matter, you know? Personally, self-discovery and relating to others have been very healing for me. But when speaking about mental health specifically, it has not been an easy role to get here. I think of myself as a cage bird and Maya Angelou's poem, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Because despite all of the stigma that has tried to hold me hostage and bar me from speaking my truth and speaking of my struggles with mental health conditions, I still chose to claim my place in this world. And I still realize that my voice held some value and some significance and that it was important to say what I needed to say to other people. And only then, through all of this, I realized that there are ways that each of us can break free of stigma. Some of the ways are consuming ourselves in content that is focused on destigmatizing mental health such as the things that we read, the TV shows and movies that we watch surrounding mental illness, as well as just even encounters we have um, on social media posts um, with mental health content. Talking about mental health openly, whether in a public format or a private forum, being cognizant or mindful of the language we use when we're talking about mental health, because words matter, they are so powerful, and when we know better, we do better. Emphasizing the importance of taking care of our mental health just as we do our physical health, because truth is, our mental health is just important as our physical health. And last but not least, 
being sure not to devalue people living with mental illness, but to see the human and not the condition. I can say that on this path to breaking free of the stigma, it has pushed me to seek therapy along the way. And without therapy, I don't believe that I would be as introspective as I am now, as both an individual and a leader. And through all of this, I realized that this journey can be painfully and beautifully messy at the same time. I also realized that everything that I needed to make a difference was already inside of me, waiting to blow. So with all of this, I challenge each and every one of you to see life's nudges not as an obstacle, but as a tool for change, as a way to find your voice in the world and discover a purpose bigger than yourself. In the end, shared experiences move us. They heal us. They inspire us. Please allow my testament to be one of many examples of this. Thank you.